Good morning, set free. Isn't it good to be set free? Amen. Last week or close to then, I talked to you guys about why do bad things happen to good people. There was a time in Washington State where uh, I got fed up and we had a ministry with 120 people living in the building and so my job was problem solver on the run you know and uh, most of you guys who know me know I'm not a quitter um, and I stay the course but I got fed up and so I went into Judy's office and I laid the checkbook on the counter and I said, I'm out of here. What? So I just hopped in our Suburban and went up to Tacoma where we did a lot of outreach. <coughs> and I just wanted to be by myself for a couple of days. Nobody knew why or anything else. I had just had it up to here. And so, uh, being that I left the checkbook with Judy, I had no money, and I still had hunger. And so, I went downtown Tacoma, where they have the churches come and feed the homeless, right? And so, uh, I put a jacket on so nobody could see my Jesus Tougher Than Hell t-shirt and stood in line to get something to eat. Well, they had young people from a local church serving. And as I'm walking through the line, one of them told me, Sir, you'll, if you'll accept Jesus in your heart, you won't have any more problems. I'm, I'm thinking, thank you. Thank you. And I just went on through the line. And I'm thinking, that boy was well intended. He, he, he wanted to help me, but he gave me some wrong information. Uh, I do want to say that once you come to Christ, you're going to have so many problems that only he can bail you out of them. You know. So I went back home after a couple of days and picked up the checkbook and got back in the game. That's only happened to me once. You know. Well, and you know, as I was sitting here this uh, this morning in worship, you know, I, I've told Chris, I said every Sunday to me is the best worship we've ever had and it's been well over a year now uh, that we've had our awesome worship team and I'm, I was thinking you know isn't it amazing how God provides for us <clears throat> now that I'm entering my second half of life he gives me this awesome worship team to work with you know and so <laughs> So, even, even, uh, uh, even one of my friends told me this morning, I was surprised to find out you're still alive. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Man, yeah, I love you too, bud. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. Uh, yesterday we went down to close to Macon because uh, I need to put together a one-ton truck to haul our car trailer because we're out hauling cars around for people and stuff. You know, when they break down, we help them. And and, uh, and so we went down and got this truck and and uh, project truck. That's everything. That's the only thing I can afford is project trucks. So we got it and uh, and. Uh, brought it back and it was a crazy time 
45 miles an hour max on the freeway. After that, it would start going all over the road. So it was a, it was a time coming back, but we made it. You know, it was a good feeling to arrive home. Just like it's a good feeling to arrive home here every Sunday morning, you know. I want to share with you something. I'm not going to charge you for it. It's free. But it's in Romans chapter 12, verse 12 and 13 maybe. It says, Rejoice in hope. Be patient, or I like to use the word content. Be content in tribulation. What is tribulation? Tribulation is hard times. You know, things that come and blindside you. Bad things happen to good people, you know. Be constant in prayer. The Bible says pray without ceasing, right? And then the verse 13 says, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. I think that pretty much sums up our church. We care about others. We care about uh, our church body, our church family. And uh, another def definition of tribulation is a cause of great trouble or suffering. I, when I read that, I thought about that kid in Tacoma. Accept the Lord Jesus and you won't have any more trouble. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about James chapter 5. Most of you know that James is my favorite book in the Bible. <laughs> I do believe that if you'll read and apply the book of James, that uh, you, can c you can come against any issue in your life because you'll come with the Lord Jesus, not only in you, but by your side. I'm hoping that there's somebody out there on the internet or, or someone here that it's just like wave after wave after wave of tribulation comes but they don't fold we need to be available for those who do you know we've got to be strong for the weaker ones because when you receive the Lord Jesus you don't turn into a spiritual champion overnight you have everything in you at that point to become what God wants you to be. But we need to learn how to apply this stuff in our lives, right? And one of the things that we need to overcome is the fear that we're not adequate to share the gospel with others because of our past. You don't have a past with God. You don't have one. He forgot about it. You know? Get that in your head. God holds no record of wrongs, even, but we do, but he doesn't. So know that when you're presenting the truth, the solution to people, know that God is in it. I love the Great Commission. Because God told us what he wants us to do. Go. Not stay. Not sit. Go and make disciples. How do you do that? First of all, by being one. By being one. A follower of Jesus. Not, not someone who just knows about him. But someone who lives it out. That's how you make disciples. By being one. And... The world is watching us, guys. Who are those people who have church in a trailer? You know? I said, I bet this thing's a lot nicer than those churches and when the apostles were marching around. You know? 
So James chapter 5, verses 7 to 11. It says, be patient, but the gospel according to Kenny says, be content. Be content. Be okay. Even in the midst of tribulation, when things are coming at you from all directions, the one stable thing you have is Jesus. He's the only thing sometimes that, that you can lean on during tribulation. It, it, I'm, I'm so thankful that I have Judy because, uh, man, she takes care of me. She does, you know, and I don't understand it. I'm, like I tell people, I just hope she never gets her vision back, <laughs> you know. I <laughs> said, so what am I doing with this guy? This guy? Be patient. Be content then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. That's a long time for some of us. But if we're content, we're okay. Knowing that no matter what happens, you belong to him. I was talking to Johnny this morning, and he said, you know, it's crazy out there. You know, people, people need to be carrying guns. And, uh, and I think, well, yeah, that'd be kind of cool, but uh, do you think that anyone could have put a, put a bullet in your head before God allows it? See, God already knows the day and the hour and the second when he's going to take us home. You know? And there's nothing we can do to delay it or to hurry it up. God's already got it assigned. You know, he knew that before we were born. So let's not be fearful of this life or what can happen. You know? And uh, I've talked to this about to Judy a lot about Judy. God's not going to bring us this far to drop the ball. You know, he loves us. He cares for us all these years. God has sustained us. You know, it's to the point now where I know it's going to happen that way. I don't worry. I don't, the Bible says don't worry. <laughs> you know, okay. I think maybe sometimes I change the meaning of worry so that I can. You know, like in the middle of the night last night when Marjorie, you know, was in the hospital with a problem in her, with her heart. Those of you who know me for any length of time know that I'm a fix-it guy. And so when stuff happens that I can't fix, the first thing I do is pray, and then I hope that God will give me the ability to fix it when it's only He can do it. You know? But I think about you guys all the time. You're precious to me. So be patient, be content where you are. If there are changes that need to be made in your life to get you aligned with the Word of God, make them. Make them. Make the changes. Only you can do it. This next sentence is blows me away. It says, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Do you know there's some times that the land doesn't produce the crop. Tribulation comes. Locusts come. Storms come. Hungry animals come. What then?
things don't always work out like we planned. But to those that are saved, God always has a plan. He doesn't leave us hanging. Sometimes we don't want to take his plan. And then it's on us. So then it says, you too. So take this lesson from James. as you too be content, be patient, and stand firm. Guys, the only way that we can stand firm in this world is to know that we're not standing alone. The only way we can do it. There are too many forces out there, inside and outside the church, seeking our failure. If you're living for God, others that don't have got to say bad things about you to make themselves look okay. Get used to it. Don't put their faith in people. Put it in God. He's the only one that can rescue us out of this, right? So be content in your life. Whether you have or have not, learn to be content and happy. Do you know that we're much more effective out there in being ambassadors for Christ if we're smiling. This morning I was looking at some posts uh, from set free churches on, uh, on the west coast and nobody's smiling. They're looking gangsta. I'm going, what is that, man? I thought the joy of the Lord's our strength. Why do you want to look like a tough guy? You ain't a tough guy. We know the tough guy. But we ain't it. So smile. Don't, don't look like you've been baptized in lemon juice. Smile out there, guys. Give others something that they would want to be like. Right? I like to laugh. I like to kid around. Not just because I'm fat. Fat people laugh a lot. But, but because I want to be happy. You know, I do. I want others to be happy. I make the rounds of whatever restaurant we're in, talking to people. Judy kind of sometimes feels like left out a little bit, but, you know, I make people smile and make them happy. And I got my best on. It's all about Jesus. Man, if I can just make one miserable person smile, they're going to remember that. You know? A lot of miserable people out there, guys. With good reason. So you too be patient and stand firm. Why? Because the Lord's coming is near. We need to be patient and standing firm because Jesus is coming. One day we'll be in heaven. And you know, it, it's funny how <laughs> we drive down the road, we don't consider the asphalt. But to God, our gold, our treasures is like asphalt to him. The streets are paved in gold, right? So that's meaningless in heaven. We get to be with our Savior forever and ever. <laughs> I, I just can't get over that, you know, because I'm a time guy, you know. I'm a time guy. I said, uh, we need to leave early. Because the doctors, the doctors expect me to be on time, although they're not on time. You know, it's okay for them to be late, but not me. So I'm going to do my part, right? <laughs> wherever I go, wherever I do. Why? Because I just want to be that way, you know? I go to my Monday meeting at the Chattahoochee with some other pastors and we pray together. And it's a good thing. And I'm the youngest there, you know. 
can you imagine that? Me being the youngest anywhere that's not in a retirement home? You know? I love doing ministry in retirement homes because I'm the youngest one there. The joy of the Lord, guys. The, joy. the Bible says that. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Makes us strong, right? So Jesus is coming. That gives us something to look forward to, and there's nothing that anybody can do to stop that from happening. He's coming. God don't lie. He's coming. Come get us. Don't grumble, oh boy, against one another, brothers and sisters. Don't grumble. What is it going to produce? Think about it. What's it going to produce? People make their stand, they don't make their stand, or, and, and so they just argue. The backbiters for Jesus' ministry is invalid. God don't like it. Right? I'm thankful that we really don't have that here at Set Free. We really love each other here. It's an exciting thing for me to come in here on Sunday mornings so I can be with you guys. It says, don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. You're going to get a spanking. Right? You're not going to be blessed by living outside of the parameters of Scripture. Cannot. Don't expect God to bless you if you're flipping him off by how you live. Come on. The judge is standing at the door. I love that picture of Jesus standing at the door with his hand out, but there's no knob. You ever seen that? There's no knob because he doesn't open it. We have to open the door and let him in. That's a, to me, that is a, an amazing picture of life. He's standing there waiting to come in. But he's not going to mow the door down to do it. You've got to invite him in. He is standing at the door. He is waiting for us to respond to him. Instead of responding to our adverse conditions. Because what we're really telling him is if we're worrying and fretting is that he's just not enough. He's our all in all. He's everything. He's the solution to every issue. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience. That's a big one. An example of patience. An example of contentment. When others look at us, are they going to see people that are fretting over stuff? We need to be the stability out there because the only stable one lives in us. As an example of patience in the face of suffering... How do you handle adverse conditions? Others are watching. Really? Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Look back in Scripture on how uh, on how the Christians reacted. They sure weren't all perfect. And there was stuff going on that Paul had to deal with in the churches. People are watching. That's the reason. As you know, right, we need to know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. Our testimony. Check this out. What, is, what God has done in our life matters. And we can tell people how God has been there throughout our whole life or since we got saved without glorifying Satan. You see, we don't dwell on how Satan had us. We, we dwell on how God rescued us. You know, I've told you before, people, churches want me to come give my testimony. The greatest testimony there is is I was going to hell and I ain't. You know? 
I was going to go to eternal damnation and now I'm going to heaven forever. And there's nothing that any man or I can do to change it. See? We recently talked about Job and uh, I like to think about Job's endurance. You know, I don't think that we can even wrap our arms around what happened to that guy. But we've seen it in Scripture. How he endured wave after wave after wave of tribulation. Personally, you have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought, finally brought about. There's an end to it. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He was there every minute that Job was going through his trials. He was, he's there every minute that you go through yours. And he wants to rescue from this stuff. He wants to provide for you. That's amazing when I think about how God has sustained Judy and I for all these years in the face of adverse conditions, you know, tribulations in the eyes of men. And if I had to carry that load on myself, man, I would have been destroyed right off the bat. But nothing can come against me that God can't rectify. Nothing. He knew it was going to come before it came. He's got me. He's got you. How about today we think about <clears throat> not worrying, the difference between worry and concern. And we need to make sure that we pay the light bill when it comes due. That doesn't mean we worry about it. It means it's on our agenda list to think about. Uh, you know, we, we, need to, we need to support God's work here. You know, physically and financially. God set down the parameters in Scripture. Isn't that cool that we don't have to think about it? We know it because His Word to us, His letter to us, tells us what we need to be doing. He doesn't want, to want us worrying. He says, can it add a single day to your life? As if I would want to add a day to my life? You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for us to be rocked out of here. You know, come and get me. I want to see my mama. She's up there. Be content. Be content. Be grateful for who you belong to, Christian. And that there's nothing that can change that. We didn't have the power to get saved and we don't have the power to lose it. It's a gift from Jesus. You know, it's a gift from him. He's not an Indian giver. He's not going to take that back. He's God. We're not. As you're going about your daily lives, guys, think about who you belong to. And think about the people around you. Most of them are not going to heaven. Most of them. Most of the world's population. They're not going to heaven. Because only Jesus Christ can get you into heaven. Most of the world denies him. Isn't that sad? It's God's desire that none perish, but that all would come to repentance. Let's do our part as ambassadors of Christ 
to speak the words that he would have us to speak to everybody. Even people in Cracker Barrel. That's what I like about our vests. They make a statement wherever we go. You know? What a neat way to break the ice. Be an icebreaker. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your word. Oh God, we don't have to wonder how you want us to live and what you want us to do. We just simply read your letter to us and you're crystal clear on what you expect out of us. Father, thank you for the great commission, Lord, that you gave us to, there's no doubt in what you want us to be doing. And the great commission wasn't written for a select few. It was written for all of us, Father. So may we take it to heart, Lord, and, and represent you, make you priority one in our lives. And Lord, we give you all the glory and honor, oh God, for all the good things that happen in our life. And may we trust you when things blindside us that we would think would be a negative thing. But God, we remember how you rescued us from all the things up to this point, Lord. And we're still going through stuff, Father, but you're greater than that. Father, I pray a special blessing on everybody that's here today, Lord, and, and those on the internet that are watching, Father, I pray that you would pierce their hearts. Lord, they would have a renewed zeal for serving you. And if the, those that are lost out there, Father, I pray that you would uh, minister to them, Lord, that they would have a hunger uh, to surrender to you. Father, I pray right now that you would uh, bless our food, and that it would give us health and strength, Lord, and give us sweet fellowship together today as we eat together and laugh together and maybe cry together. Father, I, I thank you for the offering today, Lord, that it's always enough. You're always enough, Father. Thank you for that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.